using screenshots for TI-83 and TI-84 Plus series and TI-Inspire graphing calculators. Here are my TI-Inspire and TI-83 Plus calculators hooked up to my computer using USB connectors from TI while working on this lesson. About three years ago, I was a member of a TI graphing calculators users group. It was there that the facilitator, Karen, demonstrated how to use the TI Connect calculator connectivity software. I became really interested in its ability to create calculator screenshots. Before I knew how to do screenshots, I made my own graphics using the features of PowerPoint. And here's one I made for one of my earlier videos. This graphic of a calculator view screen had one great disadvantage. It took me a fair amount of time to work this out. Another but more minor disadvantage is that it just doesn't look like an authentic TI-83 or TI-84 view screen. In order to create screenshots, you will need to download the TI Connect connectivity software from Texas Instruments. Go to http colon forward slash forward slash education dot ti dot com. And here we are at the TI website for education. Go to Downloads. Choose Apps, Software, and Updates. Here are the downloads available. Choose Connectivity Software. Here's the Connectivity Software page. Choose TI Connect Software for Windows. Macintosh is also available. And it brings you to this page. Click here to download. It takes you here to the File Download dialog box. Click Run. You should know how to install it from here. After you click I agree and all that stuff, you can open the program and this is what it looks like. Choose TI Screen Capture. If your calculator is plugged in, like my TI-83 Plus is plugged in with a TI Silverlink cable right now, it may give you this immediately, a file with a screen capture image of what's on your calculator view screen. If it's not plugged in or your computer doesn't recognize the calculator, this is what you'll see, the computer searching for the calculator. And you'll eventually get this error message, cannot find a device. And here's what happens when I plug it in and try again. This time it's recognized. With the TI-83 Plus highlighted, click Select, and it creates an image file of our view screen. To place a screenshot into a PowerPoint, Word, or some other files, click Edit. Then go to Copy. Then go to your PowerPoint or other application like I've done here and right click then paste. It puts the screenshot just like I've done here. You can resize the image in a couple ways. I like to right click on the image then go down here to Format Picture. We get the Format Picture dialog box. Go to the Size tab. We see that the height of the original image is 1.33 inches. This is very hard to see because it's very small. I recommend, if at all possible, to use a minimum height of 3 inches or more. Here the height is changed to 4.03 inches. Click OK. And here is the enlarged image. It's definitely set for better viewability. At this point we can leave the image like this, black text with all the other areas of the view screen transparent, or we can make it look more like a view screen. To create a view screen like background, select the screenshot object with a single left click. You will see the edges outlined with the little circles at the corners and at the sides top and bottom, as well as the green dot at the top you can use to rotate the image. Go here at the bottom to access the Rectangle Shape tool to trace a rectangle around the screenshot of the view screen. And after having traced the rectangle, I hope you can see outlined around the dots neatly. I invite you to experiment so you can get a uniform look that you like. You now have a rectangle blocking the screenshot. You can format the rectangle to the color and characteristics you want by right clicking and going to Format Auto Shape so this is what you see. Here's the Format Shape dialog box. Go to Colors and Lines. Here's the Colors and Lines tab. I like to have a line thickness of 3 points, so I change it to 3 point. I like to change the color of the background as well. I like to use the bright turquoise color as my background. I find that it gives my screenshots a unique, distinctive look. This is what it looks like. If you look at my more recent videos, this is the color you see of my view screen backgrounds. If you look at my earlier videos, they are a paler, less shiny blue. Move the rectangle to the back by pressing Draw in the lower left corner. 
and then go up to order then send to back and this is what it looks like after all that with practice this operation will go very fast I have found that it helps the presentation to keep the view screens in the same place as you go from one screenshot to the next. Keeping steady placement means less confusion for your viewers. For instance, from the last screenshot, I left the background rectangle in the same place and replaced the screenshot with one of the graphed version of the function. So far in this lesson, I've been using PowerPoint from Office 2003. For Office 2007, PowerPoint handles the screenshots from TI Connect differently. This is a screenshot using Office 2007 PowerPoint. Instead of putting out a transparent screenshot, can you notice that the pure white background is included as part of the image? In some ways, this is easier because you don't have to construct a rectangle and put it behind the transparent screenshot. Right-click on the image to get this context menu, then go here to Format Picture at the bottom. You get the Format Picture dialog box. Go to Recolor. Go to the drop-down menu and recolor. I'm going to choose this color here, then close. And this is what it looks like, but it's a single object with the background built in as opposed to PowerPoint 2003 version where it's really composed of the screenshot and the background rectangle. To change the size and position, you can move it around and drag the corners of the object as I've done here. But what I like to do instead is go to right click on the object, but instead of formatting object, go to size and position. You are brought to this size tab. Note or adjust the height here. This is four inches high. Write it down because as you go from slide to slide showing screenshots, you'll want the screenshots to have a uniform look. Then when you have a position you like, go to the position tab. Note these positions as well as the size so you can duplicate position as well. Otherwise, the screenshots may jump around from one slide to the next, which can be a little unsettling to the viewer. To conclude this lesson, we'll briefly show the use of the TI Inspire connection software. To download the software for this, we go to the TI website for education again. Go to Downloads, choose App Software and Updates. This is the Download Central page. Go to Connectivity Software. Here's the page for the connectivity software under the TI Inspire. Then go to download the computer link software at the top left here. And from this screen, choose the version for Windows or Macintosh. I choose Windows. Here's the file download dialog box. Press Run. You should be able to complete the installation from here. We'll show the use of the TI Inspire computer link software shown here. With the calculator highlighted, choose Select here. And this is what you see. Go here to Screen Capture. This is the view of the Screen Capture tab. Now press this little camera button to bring up the Screen Capture. And here it has the screenshot of the TI Inspire home screen. Copy it by going to Edit, then Copy. Then you can go to your PowerPoint slide and paste it by right-clicking and paste. And from here you can right-click, then format as you would like. Try to keep size and position constant from one slide to the next if you're staying with the graphing calculator view screen to make things better for your viewers. We've gone over a lot in this lesson. This has been using screenshots for TI-83 and TI-84 series and TI-Inspire graphing calculators. Thanks for viewing.